This is a teaching moment. Hey guys, welcome to the show. It's Hesiod once again. If you have happened to stumble upon this video by chance, you won't see any gameplay, okay? All I'm gonna do is talk about cards in a children's card game. And if you're not interested in learning how to play this deck, that can be very boring. So, if you're interested in the gameplay, I also made a video about that. You can check out that if you want to in the info box up there or in the description down below where you can also find the deck code. Also, I'm not claiming to be perfect. If you have any adjustments that you want to make or you want to play something else in your deck, just ask me in the comments below. I'm a very small YouTuber. I will answer you for sure, believe me, I will. Also, I noticed a mistake before recording this video. I'm actually just going to change up Yoxoron Master of Fate with Cthun the Shattered, which is just a better inclusion in this deck. So we're gonna do that right away and you can check out the with the deck code that I actually did that. So the very first question with any deck should always be right away, what does this deck even do? And that is easy answered because as you can see, as the title suggests, this is a control warrior. The question is, what is a control warrior? The purpose of a control warrior or a control deck in any means is to lose the board on the early turns of the game, early to mid game we will lose the board, but we do have means to come back with stuff like Brawl for example. We can play Brawl and clear the opposing side of the board. So the purpose is we will fall behind but we will exhaust the opponent with very powerful stuff and come back on board and play very meaningful minions and things and win the game from there. So what makes this Control Warrior different than other Control Warriors out there? The main difference is that we don't rely so much on small removal like Shield Slam for example. We do generate armor but I found Shield Slam to be way too clunky to be played. And that is why we rely more on minions, on mid game minions to remove the opposing side of the board and try to stay alive so we can actually drop the high end of our deck and win from there. So having explained that, it might be time to actually talk about the deck and we're going to talk about the cards in three different categories. Uh, I divide three different categories in this deck. We actually kind of just run card draw, removal and big stuff. Let's start off with the card draw. You might notice we just run one copy of Stage Dive and, and the reason for that is that we only run Kargoth Blade Fist as a rush minion in this deck. You could actually just include two copies of Stage Dive because the first one will draw Kargoth Blade Fist and the second copy of Stage Dive might just uh, tutor out for you Kargoth Prime which is also very valuable. But I found one copy of Stage Dive to be enough because a lot of times we'll just draw into Kargoth Blade Fist and the second copy of Stage Dive won't be as valuable. Another very nice card that tutors out something specific that we actually need is Corsair Cash. We only run two weapons in this deck which is Reaper's Scythe and Bulwark of Azinoth. And yes, sometimes the second copy of Corsair Cash won't be as valuable because it won't draw anything. But it's really really important to get these weapons out of our deck because we rely on them a lot. I'm gonna talk about them in a second. Corsair Cash is an inclusion in almost any warrior deck I think. Except for Rush Warrior which relies on minions. We do rely on weapons, that is why we include Corsair Cash as a 2 off. Another way to draw cards, but a little sketchy actually, is Slam. Slam is very slow because it doesn't kill the opposing side's minion if you want to draw cards with it. But it's also removal. You can just kill something with it and that is good enough to include I think. If you don't kill the opposing side's minion, you will still draw a card. Two mana draw one isn't great, 
so if you have a better idea, just tell me in the comments. Another way to draw cards is discovering them. And when Miss Scorpid is not just card draw, but also kind of removal. This is a very nice minion in a control deck because you get to discover a spell. And warrior spells tend to do removal things, which we also try to do in this deck. Also, this guy is poisonous, which means that the opposing side will have trouble removing it without losing a minion. And that is very valuable and definitely an inclusion in a warrior deck. Something that might seem very strange to you is Ringmaster Watley in this deck. I love Ringmaster Watley because he's a lot of card draw and I love card draw in general. But Ringmaster Watley draws a mech, a dragon and a pirate. And he is the foremost reason why we even include Scrap Golem and uh, Sword Eater. Sword Eater is just a good card by itself, we'll talk about that in a second. But Ringmaster Watley will draw you three cards. A little bit sketchy is that you can't uh, actually uh, curve out Ringmaster Watley into Scrap Golem because they are both 5 mana. But it's still okay, Scrap Golem is a good control tool. And also you can just go Ringmaster Watley into Sword Eater next turn, take out something on the opposing side and armor up. And we want to hit the button quite a lot with this deck because we want to gain armor, we want to stay alive. So Ringmaster Watley might seem a little sketchy, but he's a lot of card draw. And I really like him and this deck is kind of tailor tailored around him. So I think he is an inclusion in this version of a Control Warrior. Another way to draw cards is Tail and Ford Ring. Tail and Ford Ring is a very nice taunt minion because it's super annoying. It has Divine Shield and it draws you the highest cost minion in your deck. So if you haven't shuffled Cthulhu in your deck already, this will get you Isera, Rattlegore or Alexstrasza the Life Binder. If you have happened to draw these already, it gets Troublemaker and so on. So Tail and Ford Ring is a nice inclusion in any control deck, I think. And you should just run this in any kind of control deck, including Control Priest, which I really don't get why Control Priest doesn't run this minion. Maybe it's too slow. Hmm. Another nice way to generate and draw cards is Isera the Dreamer. I really love this minion, I love Isera, I think she's really cool and she has a really nice home in a control deck. She will add a bunch of stuff into your hand that is very valuable. And since we already run Ringmaster Watley, Isera really does fit this deck. We can't really cheat her out, that's a little bit of an issue and 9 mana that means we can't armor up upon this, but we will get Dream into our hand, which means that we can slam Isera and then just take off something on the opposing side of the board for one mana with a Dream. And that is quite valuable. Also, she's just cool. I love her. Hi, oh, Isera. I love you. Besides card draw, we of course, as a control warrior, run a lot of removal. And the first thing that comes to mind here is Minefield. A Minefield is kind of slow in the current meta actually. Uh, but on turn 2 you can take out pretty much every board with this. There is going to be a 1-3 and a 2-2 maybe on the opposing side of the board. And Minefield will take care of that. Also Minefield kind of nicely synergizes with Bladestorm, it synergizes with Lord Barov, it synergizes with Rancor, and that is very valuable. So I think Minefield is a two-off in pretty much every warrior deck. Every control warrior deck, sorry. We already talked about Slam. Slam is a little bit sketchy. Maybe you want to include something else. Tell me in the comments if you want to. A little awkward at times. But still nice removal is Blade Storm. Blade Storm is sometimes not good enough. That's a big problem. But sometimes on turn 3, they will have like uh, three one threes on the opposing side of the board and Blade Storm will take care of the opposing side of the board. But sometimes it won't. But at the same time, with Lord Barov, Blade Storm into uh, Lord Barov into Blade Storm is a very nice combo and will take care of any ball that is very valuable. Also, Blade Storm really nicely synergizes with Brawl. You can brawl a board 
and anything that is left you can decide if you want to take it out with Bladestorm or not because Bladestorm will take out a single minion anytime you want to. So this also kind of takes care on its own. If Ticketus is on the opposing side of the board on its own, this will take care of Ticketus and that's very valuable. A very underrated card in Control Warrior, at least in my opinion, is Rancor. Rancor is actually a very good card in Control Warrior just because it's a consecration, yes, it won't deal face damage to the opposing side, but you will gain armor and that armor a lot of times just saves you. I had some games where I just went Rancor for one, uh, for one gain of armor of two and that is sometimes just good enough. Uh, yes, it's very expensive. But you can uh, combo it with Slam, for example. You can combo it with Minefield. You can combo it with Blade Storm, and that makes Rancor very, very valuable. And I want to point out: at seven mana, you can go Lord Baroff into Rancor, killing anything. You will kill everything, and you will gain a bunch of armor if the opposing side has a lot of minions. Rancor is very nice in Control Warrior. Definitely run it. It's sometimes clunky though, so be smart to use it. Another way to get rid of opposing sides of boards are weapons. We do run Sword Eater already, which is single target removal and only kills something with 3 health. Reaper's Scythe has 4 attack, meaning it will kill something that has 4 health. Also, the spell burst is really nice. You will kill three things if you need to. Yes, sometimes it will be a little bit awkward because we can't really take advantage of the spell burst as consistently as we want to. Uh, but Slam, for example, helps with that. Or Stage Dive can help with that. You can just uh, save the Stage Dive, corrupt the Stage Dive with, Re with Reaper's Scythe, and then take our three things on the opposing side of the board. Uh, also, Corsair Cash makes it so that Reaper Scythe has three charges and a 4 mana 4-3 weapon is very valuable, don't forget that. And of course, good old Brawl. Brawl is 5 mana and very slow in the current meta actually. Sometimes this will not save you, but sometimes it will. Brawl is just good removal for 5 mana, you will take care of opposing sides of boards. I have to say though, I had a game against a Demon Hunter. And for some reason they played a Isera and the board was pretty much just a big Isera and a lot of very small stuff. And I brawled and the thing that survived was Isera and that lost me the game. So brawl is a little bit of a casino but it's still good removal. You should run this as a two off in every control warrior deck. And last but not least, removal is also Kargath Blade Fist. On turn 4, this guy will rush into something and kill it. And if he dies, he will shuffle Kargath Prime into your deck, which will also rush and give you 10 armor. This is a very nice control tool. I don't really understand why Rush Warrior doesn't run this because it's so much value. Maybe it's just too slow for Rush Warrior. But I think that this is a really nice rush minion. And you should just include this whenever you run rush minions in your uh, in your warrior deck because it's super versatile and a lot of value. Also kind of removal, not really, but removal and pressure at the same time is troublemaker. If the opposing side's uh, board lines up, you can just slam the troublemaker and hope that the two ruffians uh, will take out the opposing side of the board. It's a little bit of casino though. Uh, but at the same time, it's a lot of pressure and the opposing side has to decide how to handle the troublemaker because if this sticks, you will win the game. I almost forgot about Sword Eater. So sword Eater is also removable because you get a 3-2 sword that can kill something on the opposing side. And also it's a bump on the road for the opponent to your face because it has taunt and that is pretty nice. You could also argue that Scrap Golem is kind of uh, removal because a 4-5 for 5 isn't that great but it has taunt and the opposing side has to get rid of this. So sometimes it will get devolved and then you will be very sad 
but if it doesn't get devolved, you will gain armor from this, and that is also very valuable and kind of removal. And value at the same time. So just having a removal and card draw is of course not enough because we're not a combo deck. We don't have a specific combo that just kills the opponent. We want to draw we want to drop a value bomb or several value bombs to win the games to overwhelm the opponent. And before we start talking about those, we want to talk about a very specific kind of value which is Bulwark of Azanoth. Bulwark of Azanoth is a very insane card sometimes. We already talked about Corsair Cash. Corsair Cash will give this plus one durability, meaning that you will take five hits for free. And that is super insane and very underrated. This goes into every control warrior and will save you a lot of times. And you can set up with this. So, for example, you are on turn... Eight. And on turn 8, you just go Bulwark of Azanoth into Scrap Golem. Meaning the Scrap Golem will give you armor and the Bulwark is uh, protected by the Scrap Golem. So basically you have 6 charges on, uh, on this and you will be protected. So you, next turn you can go Rattle Gore. Rattle Gore and Bulwark of Azanoth have very nice synergy with, uh, with each other because uh, once you drop the Rattle Gore, the Bulwark will pr additionally protect you and the Rattle Gore will finish off the opponent in the long run. So th if this hits three times in the opposing side's face, you win the game. So keep that in mind with this deck. Bulwark is a centerpiece for you. This sets up your huge value plays. And you want to play Bulwark before doing any of these, okay? So what are these? Okay. Let's start off with Troublemaker. Uh, I I recently read a Reddit thread about this where someone asked why is this not a legendary? And that is actually a very good question because this is so much pressure. Uh, the answer for this not being a legendary is pretty simple. It doesn't have the flavor, it's not actually a legendary minion. But it's really cool that a warrior has this to its disposal. It's so good that it goes into Rush Warrior. And it also goes into Control Warrior because it's so much pressure and it is actually so much better than uh, Gromash House Scream. And that is kind of sad because I love Grom, but Troublemaker is so insane. And this goes into your deck and is a potential finisher. Another very nice way to gain value is Alexstrasza the Life Binder. In a lot of other decks, this is a finisher, you will just go face with this for the opposing hero. But in our deck, we actually a lot of times just heal ourselves, but have an 8 8 on board. And Ringmaster Watley will tutor this out for us a lot of times. So, Alex is a very nice inclusion, but very slow at the same time because she's 9 mana. That means you can't armor up on the same turn. You can't really do anything. The only thing that we could do is stage dive, and that is not a very good play. But it is a play on turn 10. And Alex is just very, very good. Include this in your control deck for sure. Someone who has a lot of fans in the Hearthstone community is this little boy. It's Rattle Gore. And Rattle Gore is very insane because it's pretty much unkillable. You can kill it. Don't get me wrong, this can be killed. There are devolving missiles, for example. Devolving missiles isn't that good of a play against this because it will turn this into a six drop still. Uh, and then you will be sad because paying 9 mana and having 6 drop is not very good. Also there is focused will and that's a little bit of a problem. The biggest problem though is that this is so incredibly slow. 9 mana for this effect isn't absolutely great if we don't have a have means to cheat this guy out. But it's still a lot of pressure and very hard to remove. There is no mind control anymore. But keep in mind, it can be kind of removed. There is still silence in the game in form of devolving missiles as I already mentioned. And the main reason I even include this in this deck is to have at least a little bit of a chance against, uh, for example, uh, Warlock and Priest. But Priest doesn't run focused will, but they sometimes just generate it. 
And that is also a problem for Kargoth Bladefist, by the way, because we won't shuffle the Prime into our deck. But with Rattlegore, it's even worse, because we will spend 9 mana for a 9 9. And uh, with Focused Will, that is indeed a problem. But other decks can't really handle it, and they will just run stuff into it, exhausting their own stuff, and then we will win the game on the back of that. We already talked about Iserum, the love of my life. She's just a lot of value, and sometimes she is going to be the thing that wins you the game. At the beginning of the video, I had Yorkseron in this spot. And I think that Cthulhu is just better because he gives us a removal and a taunt. Be aware though, you won't be able to play him most of the time. He also dilutes our deck, which is kind of a problem because we want specific cards in our hand. But he gives also removal, like uh, the Morph Cthulhu, which just takes something on the opposing side of the board off. Or you will get the uh, Heart of Cthulhu, which deals 3 damage to all minions on board and stuff. So Cthulhu is just better. And if you actually manage to shuffle him into your deck, then you are going to draw him at some point, for example with Tail and Fordring, and then you can finish off your opponent. You won't always finish off your opponent, but dealing 30 damage to the opposing side is really, really nice. Keep in mind though, there is still Warlock out there, and Warlock runs Ticketus, and Ticketus will ruin our day. So Cthulhu the Shattered is a little bit clunky and kind of a problem, but it, it goes so well into a control deck, so Cthulhu the Shattered is actually an inclusion, I think. So enough talk about the cards themselves, the question with the deck always is, what are the strong sides and what are the weaknesses with the deck as well? And we'll start off with the weaknesses. The biggest weakness of this deck is that as a control deck, it's very clunky. Uh, what do I mean with this? I mean that against Control Warlock and against Control Priest, you don't really stand a chance. The reason being with Control Warlock, Control Warlock runs, first of all, Ticketus. And burning our win conditions, which a lot of times will just happen, is a big problem for us. A bigger problem is Lord Jaraxxus though. If the opponent plays Lord Jaraxxus, Lord Jaraxxus is literally infinite value. And we just can't keep up with that. We do have Risera, yes. We do have Radogo, yes. And those are not enough though, because infinite value, just infinite 6-6s. Six Isera will give us uh, Isera Awakens, which deals just 5 damage, which won't take care of a board full of 6-6s. Six so Control Warlock and Control Priest are a big problem. Control Priest, the big problem about Control Priest is, yes, we do also have Valley Generation with Venomous Scorpid and Isera, but if you remember, the last time you played against the Control Priest, and if you use Deck Tracker on the side, you will notice that most of the cards that Priest plays are generated. And we just can't keep up with that. So, if you play against a Control Priest or a Control Warlock, you might actually just think about giving up, conceding and moving on to the next game. Of course you can try, because we do have Rattlegore, we do have Alex, we do have Cthulhu. You can still win, there is a chance, but it's very slim. Another weakness this deck has for sure is that it relies a lot on the right draws. In the early game we want this part of the deck to be in our hand. But sometimes the draw RNG will be against us and we will draw this part of the deck. We do have a very high curve. We do run six cards that are seven and more mana. And that is kind of a problem because if your hand happens to be double troublemaker, rattle goal and rancor, that is not good enough to stay alive against an aggressive deck. So keep that in mind when playing this deck. You want, uh, I'm going to talk about that in the mulligan in a second. So you understand the big problem against an aggressive deck is that we don't want these. We want to kind of have these. And 
as draw RNG goes, we are kind of favored against aggressive decks, by the way, I think. But as draw RNG goes, sometimes you won't draw this kind of stuff in the early game, and then you will be sad. Another weakness of this deck is that we don't run single target removal as consistently. We do have Sword Eater, but Sword Eater will only deal 3 damage. We do run Slam, which is only 2 damage. If the opposing side only has one thing on board that has 5 health, Minefield is enough. But you want to actually maybe think about cutting Slam and adding a Coerce into this. Coerce is actually kind of nice removal, but it needs activation. But where there are weaknesses, of course there are strengths too. And I want to emphasize once more that Bulwark of Azeroth is an absolutely broken card. Yes, sometimes the opponent will have kind of an answer like uh, Arcane Missiles is not in the game anymore, but um, Mask of Cthulhu does a very similar thing. But still, it will eat a lot of damage out of that, and you will only uh, you will only take like five damage from Mask of Cthulhu because of this. So Bulwark of Azanoth is a very insane card. Keep that in mind when playing this deck and try to play it correctly. Another strong side in this deck is that we do run a lot of removal. And that removal will help us. Believe me, because we do run Minefield, we do run Slam, we do run Bladestorm, we do run Bla Lord Baroff, we do run Rancor, we do run Brawl. Uh, and also Sword Eater, of course, and Reaper's Scythe. And that is so much removal, we will be able to kill almost anything on the opposing side of the board and exhaust the opponent if they are not a control deck. If they are a control deck, then that is kind of a problem. But against aggressive decks, you will be favored, believe me. You just have to mulligan correctly and you have to get lucky with the draws. Uh, or let's just better say, uh, you have to be not unlucky with the draws. If you are unlucky and just draw this, uh, this part of the deck, then that's a little bit of an issue. But if you draw this part of the deck, you are in a very good spot against an aggressive deck. Another strong side of this deck is that once you've turned the corner with Bulwark for example or you gained some armor with a scrap column or whatever or you had Talon on board this part of the deck is so much value that you are most likely going to win the game if you can make it to turn 8, 9 or 10 it's very likely that you win the game the important thing is that you survive until then, which we can do with this stuff here up here. And once you play Rattlegore, once you play a Troublemaker, it's very likely that you just win the game because this will eat up a lot of resources from the opponent just to get rid of and then you will be ahead. Alright, enough talk about the cards. The very important question of how do you mulligan with this deck? is actually quite simple in this case. Although this is a control deck and control decks are very hard to play, uh, the mulligan isn't that hard. Uh, but we have to differentiate between control decks and aggressive decks. And we'll start off with aggressive decks. And against aggressive decks, you want to keep Minefield. You want to keep Bladestorm. You want to keep Lord Baroff. You want to keep Rancor and you want to keep Brawl. So pretty much all the removal that we run. You might actually also think about keeping Kargoth and maybe Reaper's Scythe. Although we want to draw a Reaper's Scythe with Corsair Cash. And that is something to keep in mind. You don't want to really keep Reaper's Scythe on its own maybe. But you want to keep pretty much what is up here until Brawl. That is something you want to keep. From Ringmaster Watley on, you don't really want to keep. But you want to I want to emphasize once again, you want to keep removal like Minefield, Bladestorm, Lord Baroff, and you want to keep Rancor and Brawl, which are the foremost targets against an aggressive deck. Against controlling style decks, also including combo decks, uh, I want to emphasize once more that you are not really favored against Warlock and against Priest. Against Spellmage it's a different story because we got Bulwark of Azanoth and that helps a lot. But against Control Priest and against Warlock you might just want to move on with your life. But if you want to play, it's very 
imperative that you look for Rattle Go. Rattle Go might win the game on its own. Also, Troublemaker, at least one of the Troublemakers, might be considered a keep, but keep in mind. Rattle Go will come back, Troublemaker won't after a Twisting Nether, and that is a huge problem for us. Against controlling style decks, you want to keep card draw like Corsair Cash, like Slam. Slam is not that great though. You want to keep stuff that generates stuff like Venomous Scorpid. Venomous Scorpid might win you the game, maybe, with something crazy from, a, from it. I don't really know. Maybe it will. And Against controlling decks, very important is Ringmaster Watley because Ringmaster Watley will get you one of the dragons. Hopefully, Isera. <laughs> if this gets you Isera, you still have a chance. And of course, since we already keep Ralgo, you might actually also consider just keeping Isera because the value she provides might win you the game. It's very unlikely though. And one last tip against control decks. Against control decks, you don't really want to use the weapons to remove stuff. You want to go phase. And that's pretty much the deck. So I hope you have as much fun as I did when you turn the corner. You will lose a lot of health. You will go down to 5 health, 4 health, 3 health, 2 health, 1 health. And then you will play Bulwark of Azanoth, which is an absolutely insane card. And then you will heal up with Alex Drasa, and then you will win the game. And that's so much fun. Hey you, thanks for making it this far. If you've made it this far, maybe you want to consider liking and subscribing. It's not so much about helping me out, but it helps other people find this video. And you can always change your mind afterwards. So thanks so much for watching. And see you next time. Maybe.